everyone, Rick here with Rick's 135th scale models doing a build and painting followed by a weathering of a U.S. Marine Corps version of the M1 Assault Breacher Vehicle as if it's uh, in Afghanistan. It's a Ryefield kit in 135th scale. I'm going to cover after I built the model some of the processes I went through, some of the issues I had and the challenges that this model itself presents. Also, we're going to go through in detail the painting of it uh, and detailing, weathering uh, to make it look as if it's actually in the field. So let's get started. This model pretty much built, but as you can see, it's not completely assembled yet. But this is in the painting stage. So I've obviously got the lower chassis, the discharge, ground charge boxes here, the covers, all the bogey wheels, the uh, turret, the plow the carriages that these sit on along with the side doors that sit on the sides of the turrets. The reason why it's in this stage is there's way too many angles to get in here and paint so it'll be much easier to paint it this way get it all ready to go then assemble it and from there begin the detailing process. But some of the details are going to have to be done prior to assembly because there's just too many areas that good details can be seen but you're not going to have access to it. So, the first stage will be to prime it. I will be using the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer initially, and then I'm going to follow it up with a Model Master Flat Black to create some of the highlights. Um, I will be switching over since Model Master is on the way out to a different enamel black um, to get that highlight, but that shouldn't be a real big challenge. Anyway, let's start the process. Okay, the vehicle is primered, and one of the things occurred that I wanted to show everyone. So, a lot of times when they cast these in the mold, they use a release agent, and here the release agent causes the paint to not stick very well. Now, because I'm doing a primer coat, this is all covered up, it's not going to be a problem, it'll paint just fine, it won't even show up but you may have this problem now and again with certain models. It's the first time I've seen it with a Ryefield kit, but it now occurred. The easiest way to deal with this is take your sprue pieces and prior to even building the model, soak them in simple green, a little bit of lightly warm water with about uh, one to 10, 10 parts water, one part simple green, or even less, you don't need a whole lot. Soak it for a few moments, kind of take it you know, move it around a little bit and then uh, dry it off real good, rinse it and then dry it off real good and all this uh, release agent will be washed off and then when you paint it you won't have a problem. So now I'm going to do the flat back Model Master enamel. I have that in. So there's different ways to go about this. Some people paint the whole vehicle black and then do the white. Um, I prefer this way. And what I'm going to do is just highlight the areas that I want to be a little different like this.
So the next phase is going to be painting the vehicle. I'm going to be using two colors, mixing them 50-50. Desert Yellow, XF59 Tamiya Acrylic Flat, and Buff XF57 Tamiya Acrylic. I've already taken these and added the thinner in them for the bottles themselves, so I'm not going to have to thin it more. I'm just going to put 50-50 into my cup, mix it up, and then start painting.
The next part will be paying the ground charges. These sit up on the back here and they're charges that are on a long string with these little bags of plastic explosives. There's a rocket here that has a cable on the end. It shoots off, goes out so far, and at the end of all this long chain is a parachute that stops the direction and it lays on the ground and then they detonate it. These chambers they're in, or containers, are actually olive drab, so I'm going to have to use an olive drab. I'm using a Tamiya acrylic and this is a brand new can so I'm going to have to thin it down. So with the uh, airbrushing what I use is the Tamiya acrylic thinner and I'll fill it up to right about here which there's a little lip here that comes up and then it goes smooth again just above there is where I thin it for my airbrush that seems to work best for my style of painting. Uh, generally watching everybody else they have the same experience so I'll just bring it up to there mix it up real good and then get it painted the nice thing about the acrylic is if you for example add too much of the thinner end you can just leave this open for a little while and it'll uh, dry up just a little bit and that'll lower than you when you mix it up you should be fine so I already mixed it once, I'm going to mix it up again, get it in the airbrush, and then start the painting. So now it's time to paint the plow. I'm going to be using for the plow the uh, Tamiya Acrylic NATO Green. Um, if you see some of the pictures of this vehicle, sometimes it's the uh, Desert Tan and sometimes it's this NATO Green, um, which this is the Marine Corps version. So it's either the whole vehicle's NATO Green or the tan or the intermixed parts, depending on when it got done and replaced or parted out. So that's my intention. This is already thinned down so it's ready to go. I just have to put it in the airbrush and start painting. At this point I'm now doing all the touch up and detail painting, uh, getting the bogey wheels done, working on the turret, all the uh, side skirts and everything else. This isn't glued in, it's just set in there still. Uh, I'm probably not going to glue this part in because the way it locks in there I can take it in and out. You kind of get a hint of the uh, insides there where I'm at. I need to do the cables 
and then preparing for the decal installation. The other thing I've been uh, researching and pretty much figured out is right here on the vehicle there's a uh, cover protection which is where the hydraulic hoses come down for the blade. They end up coming over the top about it sits like this. They come down through here and go over the top here and then drop down here for these two hydraulics. Um, I've seen pictures that have four hoses, I've seen pictures that have two hoses, uh, but they basically looks like they come down, drop down in here, and although I can see pathways they can go back and forth, I'm not sure the process, uh, still researching, but if I can verify how this all goes, I'm going to add those hoses on. Um, if not, I'll do it at a later date. So, I'm just going to finish up the detailing, um, getting all the extra little parts painted up the way they need and then uh, go to the stage of doing the decals. What I need to do next is build the tracks. In this kit, the tracks come in these sectional pieces. On this model, I'm not putting the top portion of the track on that you can't even see. I'm just building the bottom. But what I need to do is assemble the tracks with this part on the top. That's the uh, alignment piece. It's a really good detail on this kit. You can even see the uh, bolt and that that tightens it down. But I have to glue that piece on because it comes like this. So I need to cut these out and glue them on. What I decided to do is glue them on the sprue sheet, paint them on the sprue sheet, and then once I glue them you won't see most of the uh, sprue area because of where the track set up it will be covered up. So I'm going to start the assembly process now. So at this point I have the tracks glued on and primed, but I need to do the painting portion. The first stage I'm going to do is take the Hall Red, it's a Tamiya acrylic, and paint the overall track itself. And then I'm going to follow up on the perimeter of the track with the buff to give the sandy look. And then from there I'm going to paint the part the bogey wheel rubber runs on and the underside pad, rubber pads, with the uh, flat black acrylic. One of the other things I'm going to do is take a number two pencil and then on the part the bogey wheel rubs on polish it 
to give it kind of a shiny look from the rubber running on the metal. After that, I'm going to get the tracks glued onto the tank, and then it'll be on to the next stage. So let's go. So I've installed one side of the tracks, now it's time to install the other side.
So most of the painting's done. And the next stage will be putting the decals on. To do this, because it's a flat paint, I'm going to have to put a clear acrylic gloss on. For this, I'll be using the Model Master acrylic. This has a white tint to it. It's not too predominant, but with the weathering I'm going to be doing with this model, it'll work out perfectly. So I'm going to need to get that done, and then I'll start the decal installation. So I let the acrylic gloss coat dry 24 hours. Now I'm going to put the decals on. I just need to cut the decal out, put it in water. Once it slips off, I use a brush and uh, apply it on the gloss part it goes to. I'll let it dry for 24 hours and then I'll follow up with this Tamiya Flat Clear to uh, dull it down and seal it in. This is pretty clear. There's a hint of a white to it, but once it dries, it dries totally clear. It works out really well. So let's get that process started. Okay, so I have the decals installed and I have sealed it with a Tamiya clear flat to protect the decals. The next stage will be doing the weathering. Some of the things I'm going to be doing is, is the overall weathering using uh, enamel paint and then also do some paint chipping which involves 
taking and actually scratching the paint up. I'm going to be doing this along this area where what I have done is I painted this panel a little different color and the idea is to create damage and make it look like they replaced this panel but this panel and the back panel will have damage from some kind of issues. Also be doing a lot of rust and chipping along the edges here where it happens. On top of that the uh, roof area up here. So that's the next portion I'm going to start doing. The overall kit itself has come together quite nicely. Uh, very pleased with the model and the paint colors, the effects and everything. So that's where I'm at. First thing I'm going to do is use a wood dowel to chip the paint away, creating a little areas on the side so it looks like the paint's actually rubbed. Then I take an X-Acto knife and dent the plastic to deepen the effect. I do this on the back side of the damaged area I'm creating, making sure that it makes it looks nice and clean. And then on the opposite side of the other panel, I repeat the same effect to make it look like the vehicle was damaged in some way and they had to replace the center panel, but the two side panels were not needed to be replaced. Next thing I did is areas in the front that would have got uh, bumped from driving and using the vehicle. I created the same effect. This time I used some tweezers to make the effect look better. From there I started doing my weathering using the paint wash using a dots um, watered down enamel paint to highlight the details. I continued this around the vehicle and all sides and the turret. I also used a Q-tip to kind of rub some of the excess paint away. Sometimes I had to take a clear paint thinner and clean it up with that. This paint washing uh, is a neat effect. The biggest thing is to make sure that the enamel paint you're using is watered down quite a bit with uh, paint thinner. That makes it smooth out a lot better and get into all the crevices and details. If you want to kind of clean it up a little bit or brush it, just take a clean paint thinner and a paintbrush and you can wipe it off or use a q-tip to clean it off here what I'm doing is demonstrating that technique by actually taking the rust and brushing it downward to create the streaking effect this is a layering effect and you need to take your time as you do it and here I'm creating the uh, weathering wash look that from streaking from dust and dirt and grime. As you do this, take your time and you can kind of see the streaks from the brush and that gives you the effect that you're looking for. Here I'm dabbing it on, just creating that uh, wet look from the uh, flat areas that wouldn't get the running, but you would still have debris in that building up in certain areas in the lower points biggest part here is just making sure the brush isn't too wet but in a wet enough to make it move around
with doing the weathering, it's a layering effect. You just slowly but surely build up. I'm using more of the uh, clear paint thinner here to move this enamel paint down to spread it around and create the wash look that I'm looking for. The nice thing about it is if you do it wrong, you can always carefully uh, spread it around and actually wipe it, most of it off. Just don't scrub because sometimes it will soften the acrylic paint just a little bit and make it peel off if you're not careful. So I've pretty much done most of the uh, enamel work here. The next thing I'm going to start doing is using the chalk. Several ways to use the chalk. You can use a Q-tip or a paintbrush. What I like to do is take a little cup and kind of scrape the chalk into the little cup and then take a paintbrush and dab it on and wipe it where I want. I like this effect and uh, it seems to work out a lot better. Let me show you how I go about it here. So like I said, I picked the color I'm going to use. I sometimes will take and just kind of rub it on the area to build up a thicker area. And then I spread that around. Then I'll take an X-Acto knife and scrape a bunch into a cup to create the powder. And I'll use either a Q-tip or a paintbrush to try and get it in the areas I want. Here in the crevices, I want to get it into the areas that I've scratched to uh, simulate that rusted effect with the damage. The biggest thing to remember when using chalk is after you're done using it, you're going to have to follow it up with an acrylic sealer to uh, 
make it not want to wipe off anymore. Here I'm doing the exhaust and I'm using a black, a couple different shades to uh, build up that area there. The next phase I'm going to do is give it a light dusting uh, to make it look like it's dusty. I'm using the buff with a little bit of uh, white in it to make it a little lighter. And I'm just lightly holding the airbrush about a foot away from the model and just lightly spraying to layer a layer of dust on the whole thing. I pretty much covered the main part of the tank and now I'm going to do the plow section. Like I said, I'm holding the brush about a foot to 18 inches away and spraying it up with about 25 PSI and full blast. So here's a look at the completed kit with the weathering, the detailing, etc. that I did and added. Um, I did the chipping as I showed briefly in the video by scratching along the paint to create a uh, damaged area on the paint and then use rust uh, paint and chalk to fill in the areas here. This simulates a, a panel being replaced and damage occurring, along with uh, scratching and that along the side plating, causing rusting, and then the uh, bleeding effect the rusting causes. Uh, just using chalk to dust up everything as it's being driven and used, dulling everything down, uh, as I showed, using a clear coat doll or a flat to uh, tone everything down and make it look nicer. Um, adding some of the details from pictures I've seen such as these black lines along these which is something to do with uh, probably how they're stored. Uh, adding the equipment and bunging it down for the uh, crew. Ammunition containers bungee down along with uh, some water bottles and a water tank. Um, using multiple techniques to two toning which I kind of showed in the uh, tutorial of the video. Uh, to get an idea of how you would do that, uh, creating the uh, fading look and the weathering look. Uh, it came out quite nicely, I'm very pleased with it. Um, this has a green plow on it because the plow was replaced. Uh, I've got seen some pictures that show the vehicle itself green and the plow the tan and vice versa or both the same color. I decided to go with this showing up a fairly new plow. A lot of the pictures I showed showed the plow holds up real well and doesn't get a lot of damage, so I didn't do a lot of uh, weathering to make it look, you know, worn out. It seems to hold up really well, but I did give it a light dusting to show it's a fairly new piece of equipment on the vehicle. Uh, the model itself is really well detailed, uh, lends well to uh, detailing and uh, different techniques. Um, I'm really happy with the uh, painting at the tan desert pattern because that shows a lot of the two-tone effects which I, you can kind of see here um, along with on the roof different areas up in here you get an idea of that look. Rightfield did a pretty good job on the details of the model and all the intricate uh, components. I did a lot of research looking to make the vehicle as accurate as possible such as the exhaust port here uh, shows a lot of heat comes out there and it's all scored and the paint's even burned off. Try to get that effect, uh, making the tracks look desert uh, used. One thing I did notice in all the pictures I saw is the area back here has a lot of rust so I try to get that rusty look. Um, it's kind of how the pictures look too. I believe that's from the chemicals from the uh, rockets that shoot out to shoot the ground charge out. Probably has some kind of an acidic effect to it. Um, and I also noticed a lot of pictures, a lot of the equipment uh, wasn't always tan, so I've got a green bogey wheel here showing that effect. One of the things you'll notice when you build this kit, there will be a lot of extra parts. Don't panic. Um, Rifle's one of those types of companies that when they put a model together, they have lots of different versions of it, and you get a lot of those parts with it. Um, 
but it does create a little bit of havoc as you're trying to figure out what you missed. The kit itself spent about uh, 40 to 60 hours to build. Um, I spent probably 20 hours on the plow almost. There's a lot of little parts. Um, the instructions basically explain it, but you really need to kind of look forward before you start gluing anything because there's a lot of parts you put together but don't glue because you can't glue it until you get the final components together. But uh, if you take your time, you'll be really happy with the overall results. The hardest part here was getting the metal railing on. It's real fragile and uh, delicate. Uh, took a little bit of time doing that, but it, it all came out. Uh, the turret itself, a lot of different pieces in there, a lot of components. Uh, once again, it's, it's a very, very nice kit once you get it all finished and put together. So this kind of gets you an idea of what it looks like. Um, well, I used lots of different techniques. I didn't cover everything. Um, I didn't want to make the video too long. Um, but it was very, very complicated. Uh, a lot of different steps to do it. Some of the effects I wasn't happy with and kind of undid and started over again. But I'm real pleased. This is the first uh, Abrams I've built and the first desert version of an American vehicle I've built kind of off the normal beaten path of what I normally build uh, with the German army but it looked like a neat vehicle and I really wanted to go about it so that's my build I hope you enjoyed the uh, video any questions or comments please reach out to me and ask um, if uh, you want subscribe and enjoy modeling take care bye bye